BJ and I are sitting here in the secret lab. And it occurred to me, since we're trying to go to this video format, that it might be entertaining to actually show shoes when we discuss the type of shoe someone might want to own when they're going to go out and race, whether it be road, whether it be trail, whether it be OCR, whatever it might be, what do you put on your foot? Don't need to worry about the swim. That's okay. So um, anybody that's been following me knows that I have some very strong feelings. You said I have strong feelings about everything. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I have some strong feelings about what you need to put on your feet. And I think before we start talking about all these different shoes, I think the important thing to keep in mind is that everything that you put on your foot, regardless of design, is going to alter natural function. I'm going to say that again. It will alter natural function, meaning that your foot, left alone to its own design, is created in such a way that it has very unique responsiveness. And it's due to the mechanoreceptors in the front of the feet that communicate with your central nervous system to give a clean message of what to do based on what you did. You hit the ground, sensing that you're hitting the ground, how should you react? Contractile forces and things like this to put you in a place to protect you from ground force uh, impact. So on that note, I thought this would be fun. No, this so these dudes, um, came to me on a guy that was um, going to do, they hired me to do a VO2 max test on an athlete that was going to climb the seven summits. So this guy got a wild hair, they're going to make an IMAX movie of this guy challenging himself to climb seven of the tallest mountains in the world in one year. With these. With, well, he was, <laughs> he was training in these in order to prepare himself for this race, or this event adventure. And so he comes to me, I put him on the treadmill to do this VO2 test, and he couldn't complete the test because his knees hurt. I don't know if there's any relationship with the design of the shoe and the fact that he was in a bad position, but the first thing I did is I pulled him off there, I said, you know what, if you get up on Mount Everest and your knee goes bad, you're a dead man. And it it hit him hard, and so I showed him that the way he was trying to run and the design of a shoe like this was not appropriate for what he was trying to do, and I don't know if you're going to be able to read this, it's going to be backwards. Let me bring that up so people can check this out. Yeah. It's written on the other side. Isn't it? DHP Richard, you saved my life. <laughs> So the, the end of the story is he did not complete all seven summits, but he did do better. And uh, there was a problem. He got very, very sick, which kind of pulled him out early. But uh, I kept these around because when people talk to me about shoe design, um, I tell them this is the devil. This, this whole creation back here is completely inappropriate. So one more. Another company comes to me and says, look, we're working on a new shoe design. We'd like to have you help us to create a marketing position. And they gave me this. And if you can see this, basically what we got going on here is a spring. There's a carbon shank under here and there's springboard. So basically, you know, like diving on a, on a diving board. And um, I have to tell you that the people that came to me, very nice people, uh, I like them a lot. I was really pleased they were thinking outside the box, um, but it turned out that they had to bring me a prototype from China because they didn't have a shoe my size for me to present for the outdoor retailers. And the shoe ended up costing them about $8,000 because they had to fly somebody to China to get it and bring it back. I wore it during the day. My back hurt so bad at the end of the day. I gave the shoe to a friend. No longer interested in that shoe. All right, so what do you got? Well, Richard asked me to bring some shoes, and I have a plethora. Unfortunately, I just got rid of some because my foot grew, because um, I'm a growing boy. But I got some options. You want to start road? Or you, start? Uh, you give me something to play with. All right, let's do, let's do road first. Let's do the shoe.
two that I did my first half marathon. I love that. So let's, let's see what you think of that. Okay, so there's some commonalities in design that really set me off. <laughs> and um, I'm not even going to look, try not to look at the logo. I, I'm not picking on any particular brand. But across the board, guys going to do the shoe business, they go, I know, let's cause the shoe to come to a point. Like that. And I don't know if you guys have your big toe in between the other toes. My big toe is on the outside, which means that, if anything, the shoe design should offer a broader toe box so that your toes are able to naturally splay out. And when you make contact with the ground, your toes want to splay up. This is confining your toes, just like if I duct tape your fingers together and left them that way for about two hours, and then you try to move your fingers afterwards, you're going to be very disappointed in the responses you're going to get from your fingers. So I don't like this. Do not look into a shoe that forces your toes to a point. Okay? So now, the other thing that they seem to have done is they've created a very low profile because that's popular. And so there's really no stack height, um, and there's really no uh, elevated heel. Looks like pretty close to being a zero drop shoe. Very close. And uh, it's light, you know, it's pretty light and pliable. <coughs> I don't love the ridges here. And in this particular company, uh, they make these little air sacs here, you know, that are supposed to absorb impact. Cloud pods. Cla is that what they call it? All right, see, now you're giving away the brand. But anyway, I'm not a fan of that. I don't, I just don't, you see, they're taking you down a rabbit hole you don't want to go. So, next. <coughs> um, voila, broader toe box. Love this. Uh, and incidentally, all the shoes that I wear these days, the first thing I look for, am I going to have room for my toes? You're going to find that when you shift away from that other design to something like this, the first thing that you're going to notice is your, your foot's going to grow a little bit. You probably get yourself about another shoe size, maybe even a half. And it's because all of a sudden now your foot's got room to move and it, it, it starts to expand, um, which is okay. But you want freedom for your toes. It's going to help to minimize black toenails. It's going to minimize stress fractures in your metatarsals. It's going to be a big deal. It's going to make a big difference. Most people, when, they're, when they first go into this, they're uncomfortable with it because they seem like they, have, they can rent room in the front. It's got so much room. But uh, you get used to that pretty quick, too. So the other thing that this company did that I like is that, again, it's a zero-drop shoe. The heel's no higher than the forefoot, which is great. I don't particularly care for too much mush in, in the EVA foam. It's just a little too mushy for me. Um, and what you don't want to do, and across the board, what you don't want to do is dampen response from the ground. And so, if you hit something soft, your body tries to become rigid. If you hit something firm, your body becomes supple. That's just the way your body reacts to ground force. So the more material you put beneath you, the more likely your body has become a little bit more rigid and is not as compliant as it could be if it was trained to make uh, a more natural contact. So, uh, if we gave this a thumbs up, how many thumbs would it work? I'd give it 1.5 thumbs. My God, you're, you're tough. What's, out good. of how many? Out of two. Oh, okay. You only have I was two. thinking four was the deal. Oh, oh, so we're combining thumbs. <laughs> so, like, one to me is like at the bottom. So, it's like four thumbs up would be like big, right? Right, so let's do three thumbs. Uh, so you, you yeah, I'll give it a solid three. three. How many thumbs you got? Three thumbs. Okay, good. Cool. All right. Since you're talking about dampening uh, oh, ground force, um, I gave this kind of shoe a try, and it was not what I, Hold what everyone told me it was going to be. <laughs> nice and soft. Probably the softest shoe I've ever worn. It was so squishy that Richard told me this story when he was first telling me about really high cushioning shoes, and it was that. He first put these things on, maximal cushioning shoes, new brand, ran down the street, and he said he got scared because it, he couldn't, it, it's like he didn't know where he was. And I actually experienced that for the first time running in these. I bought them specifically for running a local mountain that was really rocky, and you would run downhill for about seven miles straight. So I wanted to feel better about that. And I got these, and I was so disconnected from the ground, I 
I just didn't feel confident. I would describe it like running on a waterbed because it was so squishy that I could never feel if I was, like I just couldn't feel confident in any of my motions. So that was my experience with an incredibly maximal christening shoe. It was yeah, really and, sketchy. Yeah, and I tell you, I, I try really hard not to be down on a manufacturer. I'm actually kind of down all, on all of them because I think the shoe industry for at large is not interested in what happens to you. What they're more interested in is what happens to them. They want you to buy their shoe. And all of these little fangled circumstances they put on shoes, whatever they be, like the diving board thing I showed you, the little you know, jet propulsion springs on the back, this is marketing positions, okay? They want you to look at that and go, oh, that looks cool, I think I'll try those. And then, you know, the right color, and so, they're trying to sell shoes. They give not a fuck about whether you're gonna be okay. Um, and so this is a good marketing position because cushion sells, right? If you don't feel something, then that might be a good thing. But I'm telling you where running mechanics are concerned, this is not what you want. You don't wanna take the responsibility away from you and try to lend it to the shoe because there has never been a study done where a running shoe was able to correct your problem. You need to go to your foot for that. And if you dampen the information from the ground, like this does, like this is you running down the road like this. <laughs> you have no information. And you're hoping that you land on something soft so you'll be okay. And I know there's a lot of successful runners in the world that wear these. Friends of mine that race in these, they love them until they don't. Until one day something happens that should not have happened. And so, I, honestly, at the short story, and I'm trying to get away from this uh, because we're trying to cut this down to about 30 minutes, is that we are irresponsible as uh, Americans. Could I just pick on the Americans? <laughs> if you want. <laughs> we, we want our food from the fast food line. We want it now. We want it easy. We want everything to just be there for us. And so, taking responsibility away from us is what we love. And so, this markets to people like us that don't want to think that don't want to have responsibility for the way they move and the end game is one day it will catch up with you look at this fast food no, 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 no. there's actually a study uh like a blind study that was done uh by runner's world magazine and they took two separate groups and one i, I work at run specialty but one group was fitted by people at a running store and chosen based on the way they move, based on their gait, to do stability shoes or neutral shoes or high cushioning or whatever. So basically based on what the way they move, they prescribed the shoe that was supposed to solve their problem. And then the other group got to pick what they thought looked cool, just based on color. Oh, I like green, I'm gonna get that one. And what happened was the amount of injuries that happened in both the groups was the same. Yeah. There was no reduction based on using a stability shoe or anything like that that actually made a difference in whether you're gonna get injured or not. So it comes down to mechanics, your body. The study was done in Australia. I remember reading the study. And so, yeah, what they basically did is all the, the, the fancy little dude, sorry, in the shoe shop that was like, oh yeah, well, clearly you need a stability shoe. Or, oh yeah, well, you pronate, so you need, you know, uh, this oh, insole. Oh, We're gonna put this, is there insole too? So they put it like a, they'll upsell you to the fancy insole that's gonna protect your foot. And at the end of the day, if you're responsible, it's gonna catch up with you. You gotta put in the work if you wanna get anywhere. What else you got? I, I work around specialty, so. Give me something yeah. cool. Something cool? Like actually cool? Or yeah, yeah, like give me an actually cool shoe. All right, let's go to the good side of the, the brand we just looked at. This is the North American OCR champion shoe. That was you. That is you. That, that is this shoe. Yeah. Well, no, you won, right? I did. So okay, well, then you short for. Well, okay, so whatever. So uh, I, it's really dirty. Let me just let me just just to show you that I'm not about bagging on the brand. I'm bagging on design. I like this shoe. I like this shoe a lot. There's I don't think there's too many shoes on the market that have as much grip as this dude, this dude does. I'm not really excited about what the toe, big toe trying to be in the middle. 
I'd like this to be, if they put a little broader toe box on this, this would be money. Uh, at the end of the day, I want to make sure that everybody understands that I'm not about beating on the brand. I'm beating on design, okay? And so this has got amazing traction. This is nice and rigid. The foam's not too collapsible. So this is going to give a good response from the ground. Great for trail. And uh, the only thing that I would have a problem with in this is that it's trying to put your big toe in the middle again. And I don't want that. I want a little broader design, which should bring us to, by the way, should we give this how many thumbs? I, I would do like 3.5 thumbs. That's only because you want to race in it. Well, what would you give it? Uh, I'm going to give it a, I'm going to give it a 2.75 because um, I don't care for this. That's the okay, only thing narrow, that's narrow toe box. That's, that's where they lost me. Uh, everything else about this would be perfect. If they just broaden this up a little bit, man, this would be the money shoe. Very cool. I don't know how to make 2.75. It, it's really good. Well, my downside for that shoe is... Really My main downside with that shoe is the paper mache upper. It rips apart from the pre race. Yeah, that's a problem. Let's talk about its wide toe box counterpart. Yeah, baby. 17th in the world. <laughs> right here. Oh, yeah. Don't blame the shoe. <laughs> I can't. <clears throat> yeah, so okay, so check it out. Uh, comparatively speaking, you see what I'm talking about? I would say I prefer the traction on this shoe shoe to this, wouldn't you? Um, same actual Vibram uh, Mega Grip compound. Um, the main account. problem with this old... Mega Grip. That's what it's called. All right, okay. rubber, all right? This is lightweight. But the, the main problem with this old one um, was that the rubber was so thick that it was really heavy. So you were running in a minimal shoe, but it actually weighed like 12 ounces or something, like a trainer. So they, uh, they thinned it out. It's a lot lighter. It's actually two ounces lighter than the old model. Um, yeah, so I got to tell you, for me, <clears throat> when people ask me uh, what shoe should they be training in or racing in uh, where OCR is concerned, this is pretty much what I would recommend to most people simply because I like the toe box, I like that it's zero drop, um, the traction is ample, it's not crazy. Uh, I'm not terribly sure I, I love this little dude here. Um, this is really going to suck up on your instep a little bit. And that, actually has the potential maybe 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 to support your your arch a bit um but i think it does it has a strap that runs all the way down. i get it i'm just i know that's what they're intending but uh, I, look, by the way this is really hard here this where it says zero drop this is hard so they're definitely um this is a great design mm -hmm. um i don't know i just i'm not in love with this strap <clears throat> but i do understand why it's there uh, I've had people say that they drilled holes in this. Have you seen that? That's the older model. This actually has. Oh, okay, cool. Didn't even notice. Built into the bottom. My bad. 